Sir, we are on the moon, said the ISRO chief to the Prime Minister and to the whole world. He announced this after the Chandrayaan-3 mission became a success when the Vikram lander landed on the south pole of the moon. India became the first country ever to land on the south pole of the moon and also only the fourth country in the world to ever set foot on the moon. This is a momentous occasion for our country and this has been achieved because of the hard work and the greatness of our scientists. Our scientists are the modern day Rishis and Rishikas, Munis, who have been continuing the legacy of our ancient Bharat. In this video, let's see how Chandrayaan 3's success is a legacy of our ancient Indian astronomy and mathematicians. Namaskaram, welcome back to Zesty Nimbu, this is Shirekha. Bharat has always been the land of Rishis and Munis. They were the first scientists ever who have worked for the welfare of mankind. And the scientists who have worked on Chandrayaan 3 and all the other missions associated with space are the modern day Rishis and Rishikas and Munis. Bharat has always been at the forefront of understanding the space, the cosmos, the Brahmanda, the celestial bodies and also understanding their effects on human beings. Understanding cosmos is astronomy and understanding the effect of the celestial bodies on human beings is astrology. Astronomy and astrology together are called as Jyotisha. Jyotisha is one of the six Vedangas associated with the Vedas and one of the 14 Vidyas of the Vedic lore, Chaturdash Vidya. Jyotisha deals with both astronomy and astrology. It is called as the eye of the Veda Purusha. Why is that? To perceive nearer objects, touch is enough. But to perceive anything which is far away, you need an eye to see. And also to understand the quality of the ones which are nearer, you still need the eye. So eye or Jyotisha gives you this aspect of understanding the cosmos, understanding the cosmos and understanding its effects on the humans. That is the essence of Jyotisha. Jyotisha can be divided into three parts or skandhas. The first skandha is called Siddhanta Skandha, second skandha is called Hora Skandha and third skandha is called Samhita Skandha. Siddhanta Skandha deals with mathematics. In fact, mathematics developed as a tool for performance of the Vedic rituals. Jyotisha as well as Kalpa which is the sixth Vedanga. We have seen all these Vedangas in our Veda series. You can go ahead and check it out. I'll link the playlist above as well as in the description box. So Jyotisha as well as Kalpa deal with understanding of the celestial bodies as well as measurement of the Vedic altars for the performance of Vedic rituals. And for this, mathematics was developed. So Siddhanta Skanda deals with mathematics. Hora Skanda deals with the effect of the celestial bodies on humans. Like what happens if the planetary motion is in a certain way and how it affects each individual, the businesses, the nations. This is discussed in Hora Skanda. The Samhita Skanda deals with how water is formed on the surface, how deep is the water level, how are the streams formed and also related to omens and signs. Omens are Nimitta, that is a cat crossing a street is an omen, which is a Nimitta. A Shakuna or a sign is when an eagle is passing in the sky in certain direction. That is a sign, a Shakuna. So Shakuna Shastra and Nimitta are also discussed in Samhita Skanda of Jyotisha. Sages like Garga, Narada, Parashara have written Samhitas on Jyotisha. The sun god or Surya Dev in disguise taught the signs to Mayasura who is the carpenter of Asuras and the teachings incorporating that science is called as Surya Siddhanta. There are Varaha Mihira, Aryabhatta, Bhaskara who have also worked on Jyotisha in fields of astronomy and mathematics. A work like Siddhanta Kaustubham has also been written. So Siddhanta Skanda deals with mathematics in which arithmetic, trigonometry, geometry, algebra are discussed. The mathematics which was later developed in the West has all its roots in this Jyotisha. Arithmetic is called Vyakta Ganita which includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Avyakta Ganita is algebra. Jamiti or geometry. Ja 
is earth and mithi is the method of measurement which led us to the word geometry and then there is a mathematical exercise called samikarana which is equivalent to the word equation so the sixth tanga of the vedas which is kalpa talks about sulba sutras sulba sutras are used for measuring the yagna shala to perform the vedic rituals so this is also been mentioned in the siddhanta skanda so kalpa as well as jyotisha talk about this measurement which help and aid in the performance of vedic rituals so there are other branches of mathematics like rekha ganita kutaka angapaka and avyakta ganita is also called as bija ganita and we know the story of bhaskaracharya and leelavati how even after trying a lot bhaskaracharya couldn't change the destiny of his daughter he couldn't change the mangalya dosha of his daughter leelavati i've discussed this in detail in my video on bhaskaracharya please go ahead and check it out i'll link it above as well as in the description box varahmira lived 1500 years before bhaskaracharya he has written a number of treaties like the brihat samhita and brihat jatika brihat samhita is a compilation of a lot of sciences and it's a wonderful testimony to the variety of subjects which our ancient forefathers have dealt with and have taken strides in brihat jatika is all about astrology aryabhatta wrote his famous aryabhatta siddhanta he also lived 1500 years he was a contemporary of varahamihira so jyotisha deals with nine grahas nine planets of this seven are the main and two are chhaya grahas the seven five are the planets one is the moon one is the sun the make seven and the two chhaya grahas are rahu and ketu so these nine play an important role so our ancient astronomers mathematicians have been observing these grahas and their influence on our lives it has been attributed to newton that he was the one who found out the gravitational force he was the one who gave us the concept of gravitation that is not true even before newton was born surya siddhanta which is a very ancient text in its very first stanza talks about the force of attraction that keeps the earth from falling and then adi shankara's commentary on the upanishads also talk about the earth's force of attraction the prashna upanishad 3.8 states that the deity of the earth inspires the human body with apana when we throw up an object it falls to the ground that is not due to the nature of the object but due to the earth's force of attraction akarshana shakti the breath called prana goes up and apana pulls it down so that's what the prashna upanishad says in our upanishads also there has been mention of gravitational force these ideas have been known to us since centuries but because of our ignorance of our own texts we have shown a lot of respect to the western science we have to understand that we have made huge strides in astronomy and all these sciences even before west could think about all these things so, sankalpa mantra that we do before any ritual any puja talks about cosmos the cyclic kill nature of time i have done a two part video on the sankalpa mantra please go ahead and check it out it's an in depth presentation on the sankalpa mantra and why we say the sankalpa mantra in the way we say it we knew not only about the earth's gravitation but also about the heliocentricity that means the sun was at the center of the universe the western world always told that earth was at the center of the universe but we knew that the sun was at the center and the earth revolved around it until 16th century european scientists who pointed this out were actually burned at stake and the belief was that the earth was at the center and the sun revolved around it so aryabhatta declares that it is the earth that revolves around the sun and not the sun which revolves around the earth he states this in a very simple and logically beautiful term it says laghava gaurava nyaya laghava or laghu is small or light gaurava or guru guru is heavy or hefty personality so usually in our guru shishya relationships guru is the one who is very knowledgeable and shishya in comparison to the guru doesn't have lot of knowledge and hence he revolves around the guru by using this term laghava gaurava nyaya aryabhatta has combined science with traditional shastrik knowledge even in aitreya brahmana of rigveda it states that the sun neither rises nor sets the earth revolves around the sun and hence we feel that the sun is rising and setting but that is not the case this is also been mentioned in the aitreya brahmana of the rigveda rigveda is one of the oldest texts known to mankind europeans are quick to take credit saying that they were the ones who said that the earth is not flat 
it is actually spherical but what have we been calling the shastra associated with this geography we have been calling it bhugola shastra and not bhu shastra so that means we already knew that earth was spherical and we have been calling this universe this cosmos as brahmanda an egg and egg is not round but is oval in shape and the modern science says so that the cosmos the universe is oval in shape and bhaskaracharya established the subtle truth that any quantity divided by zero gives infinity or ananta so zero is the ultimate reality he calls it khara kham means zero haram means division so bhaskaracharya says i pay obeisance to the parmatman that is infinity all these have been known to us since time immemorial and the scientists who are working on this chandrayaan mission or the next sun mission or the venus mission are just carrying forward the legacy of our forefathers of our ancient scientists rishis and munis of bharatvarsha now why would we call our satellites aryabhatta bhaskara bhaskara 1 bhaskara 2 that is because we recognize the importance of the contribution of our forefathers of bharatvarsha so this video is just to highlight the legacy of ancient india in the success of chandrayaan 3 and its mission I hope you have liked today's video. The question of the day is who are the other three nations who have set foot on moon? And the rishi of the week is Varaha Mihira. Let me know who this great mathematician, astronomer was and what all he did. I've also mentioned in the video. You can do your own research and get back to me with your answers. I'll see you all in the next video. I hope you have liked today's video. Do like, share, comment and subscribe and also check out my website zestineembu.com. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, namaskaram.